What's going on people, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be starting a brand new series called The Walkthroughs. Now The Walkthroughs is basically me going through popular music videos from the past and up until the present day that have all these sick different effects and I'm going to show you how to replicate them. So we're going to be starting with A Day in the Noir by Lil Tyler, he's been very active at the moment. Even in the past he's been doing really well, so yeah man, this is one of my favourite videos that he's done. As you can see it involves a lot of zoom transitions flashes, warps, all that good stuff. It's a really cool style of editing, so no more talk. Here's what we're gonna be making to kind of replicate the same style. So now we're gonna get into how to make this style. Let's go. Okay guys, as you can see, first step, you gotta have three different clips to be working with. I've got this one. This is the one we're gonna be zooming through. We're gonna be using the hat, okay? And then after that, we will transition into this with the rotoscope transition. So here's what you need to do. Get the one we're doing the zoom through in. We're gonna be using this clip here and bring that above and extend it above your current clip so as you can see this one starts a little bit earlier than it ends we're going to be needing this for the zoom let's get straight into it so i want my zoom to start with the hat right and you can't exactly zoom through the hat when it's moving that mad so i'd say just about here i'm going to copy it and then i'm going to right click go on to time and freeze frame okay then cut it with Control shift d just there and then cut the bottom one with Control shift d too yeah and then this one here underneath, get rid of that. So now we have a freeze and then it starts. So this is the frame before and then it goes straight into the frame after. So it goes freeze and boom. Let's get straight into the next step. I've actually extended it a little bit more because I want it to be a bit longer, but let's go into it now. First thing you need to do is mask out the area you're gonna be zooming through. You can either use the roto brush if you're feeling lazy, but if you wanna make your life a little bit easier when it comes to inverting things, then Make sure you're in full first and then you can do the pen tool. So I'm going to quickly mask out the hat. Once I'm done, I will get back to you guys. Okay, guys, as you can see, all we've got now is just the hat standing there with this new mask. First thing you need to do, name your layer to something that's recognizable for you. I'm going to put hat inverted because what we're doing now, we're going to invert it. So go down to masks after clicking on the mask tab and then press the simple inverted tab. As intermediates, you should be familiar with all this stuff anyway. So I'll be going a bit more quicker than usual. So... Now we've got the inverted thing, here's what we need to do. Now you need to make a copy with Control D and then go back into the mask tab and simply uninvert it, okay? So we have a non-inverted layer and we have an inverted layer. So we've got hat and no hat. Now you need to click both of these little 3D cube icons to make sure that we're dealing with 3D layers. Again, we're only gonna be using these to zoom through. So I'm not gonna be putting this as a 3D layer because the effect simply stops here, okay? But for now, we're not gonna be using the hat so you can hide it. Now we need to go on to making the camera animation. So go on to new and click camera over here. Now, now you've got your camera layer. We're gonna be doing one more thing before we start. You see your original inverted layer that's over here that we're using. Now you need to add motion tile, okay? So I've already added it. Make sure everything's at least above 200 and then press mirror edges. That will be completely fine. Now you need to press control D and make a second version, okay? So now that we've got two different layers that are both the exact same, you're simply going to go to where the animation will stop, which is here for me. And all you're going to do is go into your camera, transform, point of interest and position keyframe on both because this is the final keyframe, okay? This is where it stops. Now, let's get straight into the zoom in. First thing, you need to go onto the top layer, which is our second inverted layer, and simply get the Z depth on position by pressing P and bring this back until you have something big enough, let's say around here, then reposition it by dragging, I don't know, so let's say there, that's fine by me. And then I'm simply going to click back on here, use the dolly tool, which is over here at the top, then simply start dragging yourself through it, okay? Let me put it on half so it loads a bit quicker. Just drag yourself through both of them. If you can't see, you can always adjust it by zooming out, etc. So. Make sure you're also adding motion blur to all your clips before we even start because it just makes everything better. So now we've got some sort of base animation, but as you can see, I've messed up the top layer because I adjusted the Z depth after the camera animation. It's no problem. Simply keep dragging out until you find your clip again and roughly go back into where it came, okay? So you can see the rough outline already on the screen, just here, you see them little edges. So you can always adjust it to that, let's say to Make sure it's the right height and then go on to this tool here to simply move it. These are, these are really easy things to fix, all right? So just keep altering until you find it. For me, 
that's fine because remember we're going to be adding a shake and transitioning to the original we're getting there you lot we're getting there this is not too bad at all you're going to highlight all of your camera keyframes go into the graph editor as you can see with it already being easy ease it's quite nice but i'm going to highlight the right side and slightly bring it in because that adds more speed to the start now that's all cool with me i like that but as you can see in our back layer the previous clip clearly ends just around here okay you can see our new clip kind of blending in a bit which is what we don't want at all so now you're going to go back to your bottom clip simply drag this to the end so you'll see a black screen at the end now go on to here since this is the end of my clip you'll see the next clip playing here we don't want that so go on to your bottom clip where we originally started from this one here go to the end and simply control d right click go on to time and freeze frame drag it across Control shift d to cut then delete this so now we have a freeze frame layer which essentially just adds as a cover for us it's not noticeable at all when it does the job so now we've done that yeah we need to add the hat animation so as you can see i've got the hat actually on the inside so all i'm going to do is correct that really quickly by deleting this hat and then going up to the top bigger layer that we're transitioning into pressing Control d then going down and simply pressing mask and uninvert it. Now, this is why I said using the pen tool will be a lot easier in this situation because the rotoscope tool will be a pain, really big pain. So if you can, use the mask tool. I'm going to have it drop in around here just a frame before. So I'm going to press on the new hat layer. Let me rename it real quick as well. Just hat. On position, P, keyframe. Simply go a bit forward and I'm going to zoom out and bring it a little bit up just like this up there is fine for me and then simply now because it's out of frame i'm going to bring the z value all the way back okay i'm talking all the way back so when we're at the original clip it should already be at the back but no it's not enough so i'm going to bring it further and further back until it's small enough and as you can see it is back in our original clip but you can see the motion tile is kind of doing its thing there which we don't want so simply delete it that simple i want that hat to be around that size maybe a bit more actually so let me up the z value that will be okay for me so now that i've got that keyframe i'm simply going to bring it forward over here so it makes the transition really quickly in the top view where you can't even notice it if that makes sense now you're going to go to our original clip and simply drag down okay you can use this or you can just use a slider which i prefer to use just like that and now let's take a look as you can see it's kind of traveling up a bit too slow because the other transition starts so maybe i'm going to extend the hat okay we have no limitations remember so bring this here and simply copy and paste it's like this so now we have this and it will stay suspended into the air until the transition happens we're looking quite good if i press on to fit up to 100 percent but before the shake make sure you f9 this to make it easy ease just makes everything better so I'm going to show you a free way to make this transition and a paid way to make the transition. So the free way, all you're going to do is add brightness and contrast. Simply go over here, keyframe both of them. U, one, two, three to the left. And then control V after control C, one, two, three to the right. Just to copy and paste it. Bring up the brightness, bring up the contrast and simply a nice little flash transition for anybody who doesn't have any plugins. Okay, that's pretty cool. But if you have the Sapphire plugins, here's what I'm going to show you how to do. Now you could add a shake effect and really do it yourself. Take a bit of time to make the perfect shake. Or you could cut all that time out and use my new pack, the Trap Essentials. So simply I'm going to go into the Trap Essentials pack and add the latest edition, the hard hit. Simply drag it on. In one click, you've already got one. So bring it to the left, just like this. So we've already got a sick effect taking place here, but the shake is way too strong. So simply I'm going to go over to here and bring down the amplitude to let's say, I don't know, 1 1.4, 1 1.6. And just like that, that's a sick little transition done. So that's pretty sick. Let's move into the next transition. Don't worry, this one's a lot more simple, but throughout the entire video, you see them using a lot of rotoscope transitions. So let's get straight to it. So this is my bottom layer, right? All you're gonna do is press Control D and bring it above the first layer, the one we've just made with this effect here. So bring it up above, and then where the clip starts, press right click, go on to time, and then freeze frame. There it is. Just like this. Freeze frame. Bring it across. Control shift D to cut. And then you can drag this one across. So it basically, same as last time pretty much, where 
it starts frozen and then moves on to the next frame. This is what we want. Now you're going to go onto here, press rotoscope and rotoscope out your subject. I'm going to be doing off low shimmy over here. You lot can do it the way you need to. Again, I don't need to show you how to rotoscope like the last one because at an intermediate level, you should already be kind of familiar with it. If you're not, go check out some tutorials and come back after you learn it. So all you're going to do now, guys, is go on to the end of the clip where it starts, keyframe position and scale, go to the start of the clip and simply bring down the scale to, let's say, I don't know, 18. Make sure you've got motion blur on. You do not need a 3D layer. Now, zoom out so you can see what you're doing. Get this position one here, 540, and bring it down just about, let's say, here. Now, let's see what we got. That's cool, but it's a bit too slow for me. So now I'm going to F9 it after highlighting all of them. Go to the graph editor. Simply drag this one across like this. That's pretty cool. Now, all you're going to do is add a little shake or a transition, whatever you want to do. I'm also going to be using the Sapphire Shake, similar to the one I used last time. I'm just going to copy and paste this one over. You guys can do whatever you like. So that's pretty much it for the Day in the Noia style video effects. Here's the final render. So we've come to the end of our first ever walkthrough video. I hope you lot enjoyed it. More importantly, I hope you learned something. Make sure to apply everything that you learn here. So yeah, man, if you want to see anything different, any other music videos covered for this series, drop it down in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe. Have a good day, night. That's my script on. Safe.